Welcome back to the sixth gear garage. This is my 1980 Toyota long bed. And it leaks everything, including brake fluid. So here it is, another Ohio Toyota. Why do I do this to myself? I bought this truck almost two years ago and it's been sitting in my pole barn while I wrap up some other projects and collect parts for this truck. As you can see, there's not much on here that isn't rusty. It does have a pretty decent interior, pretty nice door panels, good glass. Uh, it does have a hole in the floor, as you can see there. Not sure how the rest of the floors look yet. But uh, overall, this is a pretty decent interior. I bought the truck for 600 bucks from a girl who lived uh, outside town here. And it was her first truck. She parked it because obviously it was getting pretty rusty. So I figured for 600 bucks, I might as well buy it. I mean, if nothing else, it's probably worth that alone in parts. But you know, the more I sort of looked at this truck, the more I started to like it. I already have a lifted four wheel drive and believe me, it's an awesome truck. But as I'm getting older, lifting up engines and transmissions into the bed of a four wheel drive is getting kind of old. Not to mention, you know, I want to get something that I can use to haul three wheelers and four wheelers and putting ramps on a four wheel drive lifted truck is kind of sketchy. They're at like a 45 degree angle. So this is a long bed and this is going to be perfect for hauling stuff. Now, as you can see, the bed is in awful condition inside and out. There's not a whole lot left here. The cab, not much better, but along with the good interior, it has a very good running engine. Try not to get tetanus here. This is the 20R. So it leaks oil. It's leaked automatic trans fluid. Um, I don't know if the rear end leaks yet, but uh, it leaks gas and it actually leaks back by the gas tank too. So this is my temporary uh, gas tank. Just ran the fuel lines right into an old jar of applesauce. I just washed all the grime off outside, so hopefully I'll be able to see exactly where that massive oil leak is coming from. I imagine it's somewhere in the front seal or the oil pump. But it's got a Weber carb on it and everything else is complete. Bare bones truck, no AC or anything like that. But yeah, there's rust on every body panel of this vehicle. Front end has been in a little bit of a smash up here. It does already have some nice LED headlights. But the main question is, how is the frame? I personally haven't taken a real close look and we're about to find out. Do, 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 Here we go. Hammer time. At first glance, it doesn't look horrible. I don't see any holes like most of the Toyotas that I have here. Uh, I look down in the frame, you can see there is some debris piling up in there. And, oh, 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 uh, there, there's actually a hole. I see it through this hole. All right, well, uh, oh, yeah, just put my finger through the fr frame. <laughs> oh, okay. Yep. Another Ohio frame. Well, no holding back now. A lot of rust coming out, but uh, no holes on the outside. Let's check out the inside. Pretty soft. Pretty soft inside. Well, let's go see if the passenger side is just as bad. Okay, uh, this one might actually be worse because I see the debris is filled all the way up to the hole. Decent. Not the inside though. Pretty sure that went through. Yeah. Well, the back's pretty weak. How about the front?
that's a solid frame right there. Here's a better look at the hole in the floor there. Driver's side front is pretty solid as well. Not really that bad. I expected worse seeing the rest of the condition of the truck. And even though it has no brakes anymore and it wasn't road worthy, I was still able to drive around the yard and use it for yard work. So I bought another rusty Toyota that runs great and probably isn't road worthy. That is pretty much the story of this channel. But this time is different because I also have this, my other 1980 Toyota long bed, the parts truck. A couple of years back when I was parting out my black 1987 four wheel drive, uh, one of my subscribers, Michael Burbank, knew that I had purchased this because I talked about it on one of the Toyota Tuesday shows. And he said that he had a 1980 and would you like to swap some 1980 parts for some 1987 parts? So he lives out in Western Oklahoma and he was driving from there to New York. So we met up in Columbus on his way and we swapped some parts. Now, a lot of the parts that are missing from this truck, such as the hood, the tailgate, there's a lot of interior pieces I already received from him when we met. And then he told me, if I ever want the rest of the truck, it's mine. So I was always making plans to come down and get the vehicle eventually because, uh, of course, it has a good frame, has a four-speed manual transmission, and there's a lot of other good parts that I could use. However, by the time you factor in the gas alone to drive down there with an 80 series Land Cruiser and a trailer, versus flying down and renting a truck and a trailer to drive home, it was gonna be about 1,200 bucks either way. And last year, the channel finally started to make some decent money, so I was able to pay a shipper to transport the truck from Oklahoma to Ohio for about what I would pay to do it myself. So here it is. Now you're asking, why don't I just make this the build truck and this the parts truck? Well, that'd be ideal, but this is the good side. Uh, the story was, uh, Michael bought this truck from someone who uh, liked to make frequent trips to the bars. And uh, some of his drives home must have been pretty adventurous because I guess he uh, crashed into a lot of things. And you can see the whole right side of the truck is mangled. I actually already have this fender. But everything else is pretty beat up. So it hasn't had a passenger side window for some time. So I'm thinking the floor is going to be pretty rusty. Um, I just got this delivered today. So I'm excited because now I can finally begin this build. So what are my plans for these two trucks? Well, I'd like to use some parts from this, some parts from that, and some of the other parts I've been collecting over the last oh, year and a half and make one good 1980 two-wheel drive long bed. The motor has sat open like this for years, so I figure I probably have a seized motor here. But I've got a good engine over there. I've got a good transmission over here. I've got a good frame, suspension, brake lines, fuel lines, all that over here. I have, well, half of a good bed over here. Um, the interior of the bed is pretty nice. There are some holes over here and over around here. Same on that side. But this is a good base to start with because it is still pretty solid. As for the cab, I haven't even dug into it yet. This will probably start in the next video, but you can see the inside has been pretty uh, neglected over the years. Got some spare parts. Looks like we have the original carb, original air cleaner, uh, brand new filter, and a lot of these dash parts. I know this whole section I have here already, along with the steering wheel, um, I think the glove box door too. He brought these up to me the first time we met in Columbus. I don't know if you remember how rusty the front suspension was on that 1987 I just parted out, the white one, but look at this. Look at that. It's perfectly smooth. I've never owned a Toyota which still has the serial number on the frame. They're all scaled and rusted off by now. So the plan is, this one runs and drives. I'm going to keep this one parked out in the pole barn, but this is the one I'm going to start tearing down first. I'm going to strip this down to a bare frame. This will be my first frame off restoration build that I've ever done on the channel. So I'm excited about that. And to do that, I have a, uh, well, a hoist that 
Mikey from the shop spot built a while back and he doesn't use it anymore because he now has a two post lift. So he let me borrow this and this will hopefully be enough to uh, lift up the cab and the bed right here in my residential garage. And once I get this torn down to the bare frame and suspension, I'll get that all cleaned up real nice. And uh, I'll have a good look at the underside of the cab and see which one I want to go with. Maybe I'll use a combination of four pans and whatnot to make one better. And same with the beds. And after that is all done, I'd like to put a little bit of a drop on it. Maybe, a, I don't know, a 2-3 or a 3-4 drop front to rear. And uh, make a little bit of a mini truck out of it. But something that's still going to be able to haul some weight. Now, I've never done any kind of a mini truck build or a first gen build or a two wheel drive build for that matter. So uh, I'm going to look to you guys for like comments and suggestions on how I should do this and maybe the route I should go with these trucks. Uh, let me know down below what you think. And uh, hopefully we'll be starting on these guys soon. Tearing this one down. Thanks for watching.